Hi, I'm Ishan from FTC 9794 Wizards.exe, and this year we attempted the Robot in 3 Days Challenge for the Rover Ruckus game. One of the cool things that we did with the Robot in 3 Days Challenge was we stuck to only using the Actobotics FTC competition kit. And we wanted to show teams how they could build a very competitive robot with using just this kit and maybe a little bit else. So let's jump right into it. For the drivetrain, we focused on having a drivetrain that would be reliable. So we wanted it to be higher off the ground, so our entire frame would be higher off the ground, so we wouldn't get stuck on balls and blocks. We chained our drivetrain because that would give us four points of contact with power on them, so even if one or two wheels got pushed off the ground, we would still be able to move to get all, uh, all four back onto the ground. Also, we used two Omni wheels in the front, so one right here and one right here, and we used two traction wheels in the back. And this allows us to turn very easily and not have a lot of friction when turning. If we had used four traction wheels, this would cause a lot of friction and make it very hard to turn reproducibly. So we recommend to all teams, when doing a four-wheel drive system like this, try using two Omni wheels in the front and two traction wheels in the back, or vice versa. After we decided on our drive turn, we took a look at the entire game as a whole, and we decided on our strategy. We knew that scoring minerals would be worth a lot of points, but after comparing it to the Hang and Autonomous, we thought that we would be able to outscore any robot that could score a lot of minerals by just hanging and doing a consistent auto. So we focused on those, but we also tried to create a mineral mechanism that would help us out in the future. We knew that we wanted to do Autonomous, so one of the coolest things in Autonomous this year is Team Mark. Everybody gets to design their own game element, and of course, we made this wizard hat right here. So we 3D printed this wizard hat, but you could really make whatever you wanted as your team marker. And we put a hole in the bottom, and this team marker just slides on the servo right here. And when it's ready, it can just dump it right into the zone. And so this is a very simple way of scoring those 15 points just with a simple servo. So one of the key aspects of Autonomous is also the dropping and landing on the playing field. Um, we looked at this and we came up with a couple of different ideas of how we could do this. One was using a hook mechanism which would just move and unlatch us from the uh, lander. But one of the problems that we found with that was um, we had to start four inches off the ground. And with this hook mechanism, our robot would sometimes lean either forward or backwards, um, causing us to fall. We also tried using the um, Servo City, uh, the Actobotics x cascading slides to start latch and then delatching like that. But as you can see, the robot's on an angle right here. And that angle made us not four inches off the ground. So we ended up using a pin mechanism. So this pin goes into here and it holds the robot in place on the lander latching handle. And when the servo spins, the pin falls out and it drops our robot. One of the disadvantages of using a mechanism like this is your robot is just free falling until it hits the ground. And we did that free fall at a little bit of an exaggerated height. And you can see that the channels on our drivetrain bent in because of um, how much pressure gets placed on the robot. So if you do try to use a mechanism like this where you're free falling, make sure to think about how you can strengthen up your base chassis and your frame in order to make sure that you can um, continue to be reproducible in matches. Another problem with this was our team marker, which was on this, would actually fall off as soon as we landed because of the free fall. And so um, we would need to think of some other sort of mechanism um, for our team marker if we were to do a free fall. Now we're going to show you how this pin mechanism actually goes on the robot. So as you can see in here, we have the standoff. The standoff actually goes on top of the handle, and the pin mechanism is just there to help prevent the pin is just there to help prevent the robot from falling off the latch. So as you can see, the pin, all the force of the robot that's going downwards is actually on the standoff, and the pin is just there to prevent the robot from sliding off. So when the pin falls, you can see that the robot falls, and you can see that the team marker fell as well. So if you are trying a free fall method, it can work like it just did, but you need to make sure you design your ro robot accordingly. One of the hard things that we had to design for was creating a mechanism to lift our robot off the ground at the very end of the match. 
We tried out different mechanisms, like using a hook to pull ourselves up, and a winch like this, which used Velcro, which would detach, and then the winch would hold the entire mechanism. But one of the problems that we found was because we limited ourselves to four motors and four servos, we had a lot of problems getting these mechanisms to work. So we took out the cascading XRL slide system that sold by Actobotics, and we put this on our robot. And one of the cool things that you'll notice about it is it's got a very sturdy mount and it's not able to wobble very much. That's because of this perpendicular X-Rail mount that Actabotic sells, which is a very, does a very good job at making sure that it doesn't wobble very much. Um, also, these slides were very, very sturdy and very smooth, which allowed us to easily lift and uh, hook onto the latch using this um, hanging mechanisms. One of the problems that we had was that after we were hung, the robot would fall down as soon as we turned off power. So we added this servo right here. So you can see that when I'm hung, the, um, the robot falls a little bit. And so we added the servo right here, which prevents the robot from falling as much um, when it's hung. Another one of the problems that we had with this mechanism is the string would get untensioned. We decided to string ours in both directions so we could have power in both the upwards and downwards direction to pull ourselves up. But getting this to work on such a small pulley can be very difficult. So if you are trying to make a mechanism like this, we might look into getting your own custom winches to lift and lower the mechanism. So as you can see, the robot was able to lift itself and then the servo helps it so then when I press the stop button, so I can press the stop button, the robot's not gonna fall down and it stays hung throughout the, um, while the referees are scoring. So our second goal was autonomous and one of the things that we wanted to do with autonomous was we wanted to show that you could quickly get an autonomous program that could score everything on the field. So the first thing was the delatching, which we showed you earlier. After the robot delatched, we wanted to be able to detect the uh, minerals for sampling. One of the problems is when you do a free fall, you might not end up in the same location every time. So we decided on using our phone camera um, to detect which mineral is where. We use the OpenCV library uh, in order to detect which mineral is where and uh, determine which way to turn our robot to knock off the correct mineral in the sampling field. We then use encoders to move to um, the depot to deposit the team marker and then eventually drive to the crater to score the 10 points for parking. And I'm about to show you what our phone would see using OpenCV. After our robot delatches, it ends up in a position like this. And we're able to actually detect the different minerals. As you can see, when I move the yellow mineral by my hand, you can see that the box on the screen that the camera is detecting moves as well. And we're able to use that position to determine what way to face when we are um, sampling. So once we got our autonomous working, we wanted to also try to get the minerals. We wanted to be able to get a proof of concept of whether getting the minerals would be viable. So we created this long arm, and with this long arm, it allowed us to reach into the crater because of how long it is. So we could pick up minerals without going into the crater, which helped us to not get caught um, and prevented us from being stuck for a match. And we created two mechanisms that we thought would do a great job at bringing the minerals into our robot and allowing us to score them. So we first started with this mechanism, which is like a tennis ball mechanism. It's got these rubber bands and these walls. So when I drop on a ball, the ball will go in and it won't come back out. But when I drop on a block, the block will get stuck or it won't go, it'll go in, but it'll just fall right back out. And this allowed us to sort um, for the blocks versus the balls 
and um, I'll go to the field and show you how it works. So as you can see, when I drop this onto the blocks and balls, it actually picks up the balls fairly nicely. It's able to not pick up the block and it picks up the balls. But that's when it's out here and not in the crater. When you go into the crater, these walls make it very hard, especially with the number of blocks that are in the crater, uh, to pick up any balls. And so you have to like isolate the ball to one specific place, make sure the walls aren't on top of any blocks in order to pick up any of the balls. Um, so while we thought that this would be a very viable mechanism, um, we think that it may not be the best for uh, picking up minerals from the crater. The other mechanism we made was this spinner mechanism that sucked the balls and blocks into our robot. So as you can see, it uses a servo and zip ties to bring blocks and balls into our robot. And this worked pretty well. It took a bit of time to get the blocks and balls into our uh, hopper, as you could see there, but it was able to pick them up. And then we put this on a two degree of freedom arm. So we have our long arm, but we also have the servo right here, which allowed us to quickly and efficiently dump the blocks into the land like that. And so one of the cool things that we did when prototyping for this uh, mechanism was we made it so that we could use the same mounting for both this prototype and for this prototype. That way, if we wanted to switch them out at any given time, we could. And that's something we recommend to all teams, to be able to be, try different prototypes before you actually um, finalize your design. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you learned a little bit about what we did in a robot in three days. If you're interested in seeing this robot competing, we'll link some videos down in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at wizards.exe at gmail.com. Thank you.